Hey, good evening. Bam. Check out the tulips. We've had so much rain in the last couple of days. I'm surprised these guys. Ross, Laura, you're joined in. Dude, I'm going to I'm gonna bring you on right away. Let's, let's do this. Hey, Simon, good to see you, buddy. I got this. Uh... Ow. I think uh, Ross is going to come in right away. Ross, did you get my little... Uh... Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> hey, Dave, how you doing? Hey, dude. Uh, we, we're we just meeting for the first time. We are, but I, I feel like I know you already. I wanted. I want to say... Uh, I am, I'm so pumped for this show. Uh, number one, and uh, as people come on, I, hey, uh, Jet Black Jake is just coming on. Good to see you, buddy. I miss your creme brulee up at the lodge. Um, What's up, Matt? Good to see you, Matt. Right on. And uh, Muskoka Freeriders there, right on. And uh, awesome to see you guys. Now, people, I hope, tune into this episode because they're going to learn a lot. And... Uh, we'll, we'll get into why they're going to learn a lot is um, people are always, we get tons of questions is how could I be a uh, ski do ambassador? How could I work for a manufacturer? Like whether it's Polaris, Yamaha, Articat, uh, FXR, ski do, whatever it is. Um, and a lot of people will, I don't know if they'll discount uh, people like you, but you're the perfect example of how you can find amazing people out there that can really shake things up and do cool things with brands. Because what you're doing is exactly that. I always tell people the magic of when you, when I meet new riders is not whether or not they're a good rider. There's so many people out there trying to prove themselves as riders to be better than someone else, which is, kind of like the wrong thing to do in life in general but they what i love about meeting new riders is actually what they do when they're not riding and you've got a super cool story <laughs> and you do something really cool and it mimics everything how you live your everyday life and including sledding so it's the magic it's the magic concoction uh, from from uh, we never got to meet so everybody this is uh ross laura and he is he lives in you live in two places maybe tell us a little bit about you and where you live and what you do absolutely well first off dave thanks for having me on this is a real treat and i've been enjoying the show throughout the past few weeks and i it looks like you're well and you're healthy and i hope the same for your family um, i'm here in southern and california my wife and i are in los angeles and we have a family home in Breckenridge, Colorado, in the highest county in the country. Uh, and that's where all the sleds are. So now that uh, spring is here, we're, we're here primarily in California. But, uh, man, I'm already itching for next season. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, I, I've been uh, pretty much a Colorado resident off and on most of my life. I started off going to middle school in Colorado, was on the ski team, uh, discovered sledding at the age of 13 or 14. And uh, quickly, skiing kind of has slowly been evaporating and just snowmobiling all the time. So, yeah. Very. And I, I produce music. So my, my day job is producing music. And we have a small music company. And we write music and produce music for different forms of media, um, you know, commercials, TV, video games. And uh, I've worked a lot in pop music and EDM music over the past decade. Awesome. Well, um we're going to get, this is uh, like, I, I've watched, I watched your, the video, uh, what is it called? Uh, the, um, sounds of uh, summit sounds of summit. Thank you. I watched that a long time ago and I just rekindled with it over the last week. And I shared it on my page tonight because it's kind of funny, right? How, when we started doing this show, I thought this, uh, would be a great way to, to introduce people to the, the riders on the team. And then, and then Skidoo kind of like, was like, Hey, we should have other people. And I was like, this would be awesome that if we had people in the inside of Skidoo and then we, and then it's like, all of a sudden we started thinking of people who, who we could have on, who would actually intrigue people, uh, teach people something really valuable if they, if they take the time to listen and you're one of those people, same with Paul and, and how we had um, 
We had uh, uh, Ryan Harris on from Snow West. They're all, if you, if you, and, and so I'm also flying by the, my coattails too. So I kind of, all of a sudden, when I start to think about the show, I get, start to get really pumped on it. And when I started to watch your Sounds of Summit video and do all these things, I was like, oh man, this is such a, I see that all the connecting, all the connections, the energy and I just go, this is, this is magic, right? This is, uh, this is just like going sledding on the day when you didn't think it was going to be that good. And then you get out there and it's just like, and you just, you can't do, you don't know where to start. You don't know where to start tearing up the powder first. You're and, very uh, kind, Dave. You're very kind. Yeah. So it really, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really grateful. And we'll, we'll get into a few things. I'm going to ask you first, because I, 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 I love editing. Okay. Uh, I always tell people that when I started doing, uh, which goes back a long time, I, 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 when I started, when I was racing, I used to think I was so lucky to do these big races like Eco Challenge and all that. And so many people wanted to do them. I started to take pictures and bring them back because I wanted to share with people. And I wanted to give them experience of what it was like. And not to say, hey, this is hard and we're great that we're doing it, but just share the experiences of where you go. And it turned into sort of that I started doing video. And, and I got it, once I got into it, I was like, the ADD was kind of like, oh my, I love this. And I always tell people like, you know, who get a, a GoPro or something, I'm like, if you don't like editing, don't get one. Because yeah. you're going to have a yeah. lot of footage, but oh, you're yeah. not going to want to touch it. And I could see you, you are that person to another way farther away than I am from the sun, uh, a different level in your, how you like, um, with moving sounds around to create what you're creating, which is, and I love watching it. And I, I was like watching how you were doing it. I'm like, I like what you're doing in this sound and that and how you're moving things around. And it, it's a, it's a, it's a drug, right? It's a drug. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a very severe addiction. All the time. Yeah. It's, it's gnarly. Um, I appreciate that, man. It's, um, you know, to, to be able to combine sound and music and outdoors and whether it's a sled in the winter or a bike on the summer, or something like that. It, that's that's just the underlying, you know, fundamental of everything for for me and family and and our friends. And so yeah, it's it's a, it's a real treat. Um, you know, I just I I, I'm, I appreciate all the compliments, man. But I'm just sitting here really trying to like aspire to to, to ride like y'all and and really take my riding to the next level, like all of the ambassadors with Ski do. So, you know, well, it's touche, man. It's like it's all it's all here's to, just growth. And, and everything else all the time and everything we do yeah now do you know who maggie rogers is she's a singer uh gosh you know i i can't say that i do but it's, it's ringing somewhat of a bell but enlighten me please yeah so maggie rogers is she, there was a music there's a music show in new york she was going to a music class in new york a, a U, university of college and where they invite Pharrell Williams in every year and, and, and they, they get a few students to play some music, some of their music for him. And he'll, uh -huh. he kind of critiques it. And I remember watching it and watching Pharrell's uh, reaction to it. And, and you have to look, you have to seek this out. Dude, I'll send you I've the link. I've seen this video. I yeah. think she was uh, a younger, like college girl. I think she was redhead or something like that. Yeah. She, and now she's quite famous because yeah. her music is, is magic and she has yeah. that that she has that music musical touch and and um and so why you you got to watch that because it is uh, the exact same lines of what you do and the sounds and the 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 colors you have in your head when someone like you creates those different sounds now you know and i know and everybody who's been watching knows that at seven o'clock which is a, just coming up right now we do rev for support and we both don't have uh, sleds. I'm a, I'm allowed to use this. All right. It's a little it's a little old school from you, and so I thought we'd do a different rev for support as far as engines. This is the engine of whatever that instrument is, and what's in your brain. And I want you to play us uh, some some crazy tracks while we do revs for support. And okay. uh, this is for all the healthcare workers, all the frontline people, all the people that are supporting other people, which should be us all. Um, go ahead and, and, uh, and let's hear what you got. All right. So this is a, uh, a big old fat analog synthesizer. It's a really gnarly bass line. I got a filter cut off. Are you ready? Yep. <laughs> Sounds 
something like that. Hopefully that came through the speaker a little bit. Dude, I, you know what? I almost wanted to grab a glow stick and head to my mirror, get, go into my shed where it's dark. And Yeah, yeah. It sounded like a raven here the past five seconds, and that's for all the healthcare workers. Um, here, that's a better view of the instrument. It kind of that, sounds like a rev. It kind of won't, 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 won't. Dude, that is awesome. I want to thank you for that. Uh, that's going to be the trippiest and the coolest reference support I think we have ever on the show. <laughs> it, as you can hear, it's going off like crazy. I'm in the backyard, so it's going off like crazy in the front yard. And, and I want to say to all the riders out there, thank you so much. Whether it's on your side-by-side, -side, your sea do, your sled, in your truck or in the studio, whatever you're making to support all the people. And I think it's really important at this time that we generally just keep the stoke high and pass it on to people. Because as sledders, our stoke is always really high. We love doing stuff, dirt biking, all that stuff, mountain biking. The stoke is always high. So we got to share that energy with people who aren't as lucky, who are having a tougher time and all that. And I think that's what Revs for Support really embodies. And and so many people have put forward forward such an awesome effort and you can see them all on the skidoo uh, facebook and instagram it's been it's been such a blast and and i want to thank skidoo and all the people there for actually developing that and doing it it's been it's been magic hey before we move on and as this uh do you have a beer there i do what, what are you drinking buddy uh, i'm drinking a lagunitas uh little something the summer oh, ale oh that's sick i've got this Check out this beer. Like my friend Simon sent me this. There's like I think it's a oh, it's a puma cool. on there. It's it's French and it's uh, I'm I'm just thoroughly gonna enjoy this one as much. I don't know what it is, but it's delicious, and that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters, man. Hey, are you gonna do a little uh, cheers, bud? Are you gonna do a little uh, walk down on your Glockenspiel there? Yeah, I this Glockenspiel is pretty special because I'll just go in for a close up. It also has uh stickers on it oh yes like it's got this is this you might know this is c but this is i know it as pizza and cupcake note <laughs> hey i'm impressed you you know at least the musical key of c do you play an <laughs> instrument <laughs> well I'm, I'm i've got to play the ukulele i want to learn that so awesome. i'm starting off small and uh maybe one day i could provide a sound that could go in one of your uh, your tracks Okay. Hey, uh, you know, we also got to get out on our sleds and I can record your engine and record you hooting and hollering and quantize that to a beat or something. Okay. I'm going to do that with Jeremy Mercier as well, because he lives in Colorado and that, yes. would, be, that would, that would put the trip over the top to be able to oh, do yeah. that with you. I, I want to first ask because um, of what you do music wise, my favorite comment ever was when they were asking the chemical brothers uh, and the, 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 uh, the interviewer said, uh, well, what about all those people who just say all you, all you do is hit a button and the guy from the chemical brothers goes, well, yeah, they're right, but you, but you got to know which button to push. Yeah, th this is true. And, and, and I was like, I've always really liked, um, electronic music and, um, I love the way that how you can manipulate sound. And like you say, you can take uh, an 850 naturally aspirated ski engine and add it to a track. Yep. And it, 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 you know, people, they know they're moving and they know the blast of energy they get, but they actually don't know a lot of times where those sounds came from. Yeah. Um, you know, with modern technology nowadays, I mean, you can literally take the sound of anything and twist and turn it with a couple clicks on a mouse. And then you can import that onto a musical keyboard and then play a melody, or you can program drums or something like that. Um, it's, it's really profound what technology allows you to do. And of course, uh, we, we use that as a, it's just a counterpoint. It's, a, it's an addition to the acoustic instruments or the synthesizers that, that our ears already know and love. So it's, um, it's just a great marriage between just nature and Foley and like urban recordings, nature recordings and music. Um, but technology allows us to do it. But yes, 
like the Chemical Brothers said, you got to know which one to press. And um, it takes 10,000 hours to kind of figure it out as well. Yeah, and I can tell, uh, I have a really good friend who I went to high school with who became an amazing musician, one of Juno, and and, uh, and he, it was funny watching him because along, he and I were kind of on the same, similar path. So I was racing out of high school, he was doing music, and we were kind of looked upon uh, from all the other uh, friends' moms like, oh, these guys, what's going to happen to these guys? And, and we didn't really care about that, but we were kind of shooting our own thing. And I would go out late at night to watch bands with him which was kind of against what i was doing which was always going to bed early because i was training all day and it really changed my perspective on life on what made things important so as for example there's a time to buckle down and when i was racing i had to do a lot of training obviously and all that stuff but then he brought out that side in celebration and that's to me what music really is it's it's it allows you to it puts you in a mindset of celebrating. And I don't think people recognize what music really does, especially when they, when, when they do use it how you use it, whether it's in commercials or movies or um, working along other producers to make even crazier music. And uh, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's just music is the universal language. It's the one language that everybody across the planet understands and can feel. Um, I had a, a really, my best example of, of what I just mentioned there is I was once in Asia and I was working on music with a young, with a young guy, uh, just a young man in his 20s, college student. And he and I had the total language barrier. He spoke Korean, I spoke English. And, but we were working on music together and we we're working on like this like future bass track. And all we were doing was just like playing the chord, like, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, like, you, you could just notice the eyebrows going up or like we were just nodding our heads and we were, we communicated for four hours, a hot knife through butter and made a piece of music from start to finish. And it was just, it was really cool to see that was the definition of music as the universal language. And if it makes you feel something, then, you know, that's, that's kind of the point of music at the end of the day. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and why that's important is when we look at snowmobiling and where you go and how it's such a beautiful, it's such a harsh sport on one end, but it's such a breathtaking and beautiful sport on yeah. the other th thing. You know, there's one of the most watched videos is, and I forget the song now, but it's sort of like, you know, a, a song that most guys would admit that they want to hear. And it's just a guy ripping up through powder uphill on, I think, a Yamaha Turbo. And... Um, and, and, and it has the most views because it absolutely just shows about being way out there where no one else is around. And it's just, it, you, you, you just, you, it doesn't matter about the machine. It doesn't matter where the person is. It just is. And um, I think that track is the sound of silence. I know the video you're talking about. If we're thinking of the same video, there's an epic video. It's an older video. Yeah, that's right. And it's this epic dude singing the sound of silence. I won't even attempt to sing it on live on air here, but yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's epic. And it's ironic, too, because of the sound of silence. You obviously have your roaring sled, but when you turn off that sled at the summit, it's pristine. Yeah, and, and, the, um, and then the harshness of it. And how the music changes, right? Whether riders like hardcore metal or whether they like something like more techno or whatever in between. It's really amazing how, like you say, it transcends into the sport through all these different avenues. Mm -hmm. And which is, which is what makes you so interesting is that you're using all these sounds and including the sound from snowmobiles and winter sounds of Colorado, and you do it for everything. I mean, I, I saw when you were, went to the Galapagos Islands and were using the, you know, the sounds from, from animals and what they're doing. And I, I just think it's, it's, uh, it's super cool. And um, yeah, so you have your own company now. That's, that's what you like. So did you start it out of that from, from the beginning or did you work from someone or just work your way into that? Um, it's, it's been a great journey. Music has been part of me ever since, ever since I discovered sledding around that age of 13, 14, I found my love for music too. So they've grown up together in, in a funny way. But after college, I went to a music college in Orlando, Florida. Um, I just hit the ground running with relocating to Nashville. I've lived in L I've lived in LA once or twice prior to now. I've lived in Atlanta for three and a half years. Um, and primarily was just, um, a, a guy working and producing music for other people. 
Um, and that could be, you know, major DJs. It could be your up and coming, you know, singer songwriter. It can be your, your middle of the range artist, whatever it is. Um, I was just working on just about anything I can get my hands on. And that, that journey kind of led me through different pockets of music where there was a season where I did a lot of K-pop music. Uh, I got in, in K-pop, you know, the Korean pop music scene yeah. early um, prior to Gangnam Style. So when Gangnam Style happened, uh, my music partners and I were in the right place at the right time and we were able to ride that wave for a little bit. Um, but, you know, be, being an electronic head and always having that interest for electronic music and also formally being a DJ over 10 years ago, um, I've, I've, that's just kind of carried through my work and that's, I've been able to take electronic music and apply that to like country music in Nashville and hip hop music in Atlanta when I lived there. I would find myself in these amazing urban uh, sessions with these amazing rappers and, and um, R&B singers and just doing what I did for them and vice versa. So it's always been about like cross pollinating. But all while that was happening, if I wasn't in the studio, Dave, I wanted to be outside. And my buddies and I, my father and I, um, I mean, anybody, we would just always strive to go snowmobiling or go mountain biking or whatever it was, uh, whatever season. So it just became a natural part of integrating because sound design and like capturing sounds was just, and that's a huge thing in the electronic music. I'm not the only one who does that. There, there are millions of people who do this. Um, I just happen to find like, I need to almost kill myself and, and send my adrenaline through the roof to get that one sound. Like I need to go to the farthest area to get a sound that, that no one else has. Um, and not from a perspective that, well, I need to have this, like, I need to find that sound. Like I need something that's going to be different because we're making our out, you know, 10, uh, 10, you know, two, two or three hours of music a year. That's like 60 tracks. And that's a lot. Yep. So we just need this ever flowing source of sound in addition to all the instruments, like a piano behind me, like it, everything starts at the piano, but then we'll start doing all of this like musical sound design and programming to complement that. So, yeah. And I'm just going to say to everybody watching who, and who are going to watch this afterwards, this is the energy you need that this guy has. And the way you're talking right now, that's what you need. <laughs> okay. And, and you, you possess. The I'm dialing energy. myself back right now, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know you are, but, but I'm telling you and I'm telling everybody out there, if you want to, in any sport, if you want to work with a company or be sponsored or try and create your own, you, this is the energy that you, that, that has to, it only comes out when you're passionate about something and everybody on our, that we, that we, that I get to uh, work with a lot in Skidoo is exactly like you and, and in, but in a different way. And, and, and so um, why, why it's important is when, when we ask people, uh, you know, I get asked a lot, especially by younger kids, right? I want to do this. And I, I always ask them, well, how are you going to pay for it? You're either going to have to work for it through s sponsorship or you're going to have to get a job and work for it so that you can afford to buy a snowmobile. Either way, they're both a job. They require the same uh, assets, even though they're different. But you need to bring a lot of energy, just like you do when you run your own company or your businesses. Like you said, you want to go out and get that sound. And one of your one of your advantages is, yeah, there's lots of people who make electronic or whatever music, but they're not going to get on a snowmobile and go up to thirteen thousand feet and get that engine sound, as well as figuring the sound of a shovel running along the inside of a shed <laughs> on snow. Uh, and, and that, and that's seriously, that's the difference of of someone who is gonna work extremely hard. Doesn't matter if you're raking a garden, landscaping, or you're making a video or music, or just going to whatever job you have. You have to work that hard, and when you do, that's where the excitement is, and it and, and it's energy that you're putting out, and it it comes back usually tenfold, right? Yes, and, absolutely. and, and electronic music is really that, like, I love when you're, you know, I love the building of like, it's one of the things of, you know, when they just build and it's like, you know, I always call people like yourself puppet masters, right? Cause they just control in a good way. Uh, you can literally control a crowd by, you know, having them kind of like bringing them back to a point and then they think it's going to go, but you hold a little longer and then you send it and people just go crazy. <laughs> And it, it's very unique because it's also the uniqueness of snowmobiling is, is exactly the similar. Like you never know what you're going to get. It's always changing. 
it always surprises you and it's always better than you think it it would be yeah dave question a two a two-part question for you uh what music if any are you listening to on the way to your drop-in site in your car and b are you ever listening to music when you ride uh, I never listen to music when I ride in my, like a headset or anything. I, cause uh -huh. I, I love the sound of just whatever it is, the sound of powder, the sound of, of whatever. Um, and I don't do that with any sport actually. So I love just hearing the, I have an e-foil, I, you know, mountain bike, I do a lot paddling, whatever it is. Um, I just love that. The sound of the very pure sound of like your paddle hitting the water at, at a, yeah. in the, you know, six in the morning or seven in the morning. And, um, the music I listen to I, I, changes. I, I just love, I love any music that gets you kind of pumped. And so for that, for me, I'm usually so jazzed that it, it doesn't really matter. But I always, you know, when a good tune comes on, it makes all the difference. Sometimes I, I listen to the radio a lot of times because it's, I get up super early and I'm going there and I'm like, don't have time to kind of load anything in or anything. So Lots of times what I think about it, and uh, Cody McNulty and I always have like a little battle because I'll be going up at six. It's dark out. And I'm listening to this sort of, I don't know, some whatever, loud, like uh, boy bro song comes on. Right. And, yeah. I, and I just think about, you know, it's funny, all the all the cool people we have in the sport. So I'll just send him a shout out on Instagram. And, you know, an hour later, he'll shout out back at me. It's pretty funny. And and uh, he always jokes. I give him the weather report, right? Because I'm up there a little bit earlier than him, and he's staying out longer in, in the day. So, for me, I love any type of music. I uh, I'm not too particular, but I I definitely love um, I definitely love uh, sort of techno dance. Just that you know that'll get me going for sure. Awesome, very yeah. cool. Love yeah. it. I'm, so, I'm in the same boat as you. I, I, I won't, I don't think I've ever listened to anything when I'm writing. I need the sound of the engine that, I mean, that it's all communicating to you. And of course, yeah, yeah. Just you, you, you pretty much answered it for me as well, but I'm, I'm in the same boat. No music when I'm writing. Yeah. Especially with the turbo. Did you, no, oh, did you, did you get a, did you order a turbo so, or did we, you get a spring? Yeah, we, we, well, a, we didn't have the pleasure of meeting at the shoot when that's right myself matt and uh sauna got to go do that holy cow that was another level another conversation for a, a, a later on um but uh turbo's coming for next year absolutely okay. but you got to ride the turbo oh for four days yeah so before we get into this i want to and this is another another hit of why it's so important for younger athletes or people watching talking about sponsorship is uh, we had, uh, as you know, uh, for two seasons now, we've had that skidoo feeling. Many people know about it. All the other brands know about it. And, and we, we sort of brought the, the marketing, it brought out uh, the, the, the feeling when you tell someone, you know, you're going sledding, you're so excited. There's like this feeling about it, but no one can really tell you what the feeling is. But we all know what, what it is. And, and we sort of, skidoo came up with that it's that skidoo feeling because it really is yeah. and it has really take ramped up and and people have just taken it to a whole new level and so we decided skidoo decided to have a contest um for people to bring out their best skidoo feeling now why this is also important there's there's lots of athletes out there who are like i'm not doing that that sounds dumb and, and you go well if that's dumb you'll never work with any manufacturer because sometimes things that seem silly at first turn into be the biggest and most important things. That's the rule number one. And it actually shows uh, what people want. So if you, if you want to be involved working with any company, uh, you know, I've been working as with sponsors for 35 years, over a hundred big companies. And um, when you work with those people, you have to have eyes wide open. There is no, oh, will this work or that work? Because you're dealing with people who are at a level, just like what you're at with music, at another level that you won't get. And if you don't get it, there's a reason you don't get it because most of the world hasn't heard it yet. And when they hear it, they're going to jump all over it, and then you're going to love it. So one of the great things is, number one, we had the contest, and I want people to tell, I want you to tell people what you did for the contest. Sure. Um, well, when I saw the contest, you know, I, I, I'm going to be really honest. I immediately thought, because I I've been wanting to to get in touch with Skidoo for a long time, not necessarily on an endorsement front of some kind, but I wanted to bring my passion for sound and music to Skidoo, 
and okay, why, why, how can we help ski do um, augment their efforts through another human emotion? We have smell, sight, you know, let's do it through sound. And it was just coincidental timing that perhaps this turbo and that the sound of that was all part of it. But my initial email, when I saw the post, I, there was an email address. And I said, there's the email address for me to email about like services. Like I would love to offer my, my time and my service to ski do because I would just love to work with them from a musical audio standpoint. So I sent this video in of my musical process called sounds of summit, which we've talked about. And I, uh, I don't recall the email word for word, but I, uh, it was something along the lines of, hey, I would, I would be thrilled and honored to be part of the production of this commercial by recording the sounds and then doing sound design and music and original score for you later on. Um, consider this my entry, but like it was, it was, to be honest, it was more in the tone of, I wanted to be behind the scenes with you guys. And then when I got the email, I, I frankly forgot about it a month and a half later um, ski do emails and says you're a semi-finalist and I just dropped whatever I my jaw dropped and I was like oh my god and this is just it was pretty amazing and then when all kind of it we had the interview process um, you know all these questions were, were asked from from ski do and, and the agencies and so forth and then I, I then I realized oh wow th okay this is in my heart, like this is even more profound than being behind the camera doing recording sound and writing music in my studio later. This is like writing with the ambassadors and and helping push the, the sport and the fun factor forward. So it was just like, yeah. And then when Tony Jenkins, uh, yeah, you, they, that, yeah, the, you, you all played a trick on me and told me some video crew wanted to talk to me. But when I hopped on the Zoom call, it was Tony. And I was like, hey, man, and I, we were just playing. I was like, why is Tony here? I thought it was a video. Shoot. <laughs> and he's like, hey, man, you won. You're coming to uh, to the shoot. And I was like, holy. And I just went, you know. <laughs> well, hey, I'm almost thinking it might have been a bad idea to have you on the show because uh, I might be getting my pink slip after this. You might be replacing me. No, no, <laughs> dude. No, 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 no. I, you yeah. know what? This is. It, why it's when I, this this story is so good is again it's it's you looking uh, for to better Skidoo rather than looking at something from Skidoo and that is yeah. for young athletes I don't know if you could get a better um, if you could get a better comment or a, a it's not a trick but a, but a tip from somebody. That's it, right? It, 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 yeah. Most people, most athletes, you know, if, as I always say, right, if you ask any uh, dealer or sponsor, they always go, hey, what's the racer, what's the racer handshake? It's sort of like, hey, can you give me some more stuff? And, and, and I always want to change that to uh, what can I do for you? What could I exactly. offer you that, that yeah. would, would uh, you know, that I think that could make this even better? And yeah. because not everybody thinks about, like you said, not everybody thinks on that level with music the way he, someone like you does. And you're totally right, right? We are sound people, like the new turbo, that the sound that it makes. Uh, you know, I've even made jokes. We we almost have to make a, 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 a I said a cassette, right? To to sort of give you my age, uh, or <laughs> eight. It, we need an eight track that you can shove in the in the uh, yeah. front of the turbo, or not the nor naturally <laughs> aspirated sled, and it. It just makes the uh, the turbo sounds, the wastegate, uh, so that you can you can actually get that feeling because it actually is a new addiction that just the sound is is really kind of what oh, you're what you love hearing. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's so dope. I it, it's funny to think actually how we could all get so excited about just the sound of a of a two stroke engine, but it's like really amazing how much how that really does happen. <laughs> yeah, that that is so awesome, and I think it's so important for people to hear and. You know, I wasn't at shoot, uh, but everybody at shoot, as with the other uh, people, Matt and, and uh, all, all the people who went, yeah, they are literally, they were just kind of blown away, as we usually are when we do these kind of contests and you kind of bring down the people and you have to, you know, there's lots of people you have to do, uh, lots of things you have to, hoops you have to kind of jump through. But the end result of that is you, you get these people that are just like very high quality people that just have so much to offer. And, um, and you're one of those people, which is so great. And, and, uh, and, and, and it's so cool what you do. And that's why I always say, you know, it's always awesome to find out what people do outside of their sledding life, because 
there's so many people, you know, you'll be, you go sledding with someone all, all day and you may be a little bit better than them or you're not, but then at the end of the day, no one really cares in the bar and that person brings out a guitar and just starts playing like all these amazing songs and makes you have the trip of a lifetime because <clears throat> the after part of riding was just even better than almost the riding could be, right? Yeah. I, I tell you what, Dave, uh, really cool. What happens is when we have clients uh, come to Colorado, we'll do like a writing uh, trip or, or writing camp or we're just whatever we're doing. Um, some clients over the years have traveled from all around the world to come to Colorado to work. Um, and in the winter, they're always treated to a snowmobile ride on their second day after they've acclimated. We go out for a snowmobile ride the first thing. And I tell you what, man, it's hard to get any work done after you do that. It's like they just want to keep going or you're just totally exhausted in the best way after writing. And really sometimes work doesn't get done when they get a taste of, you know, that ski do feeling because there's like, that literally was the most fun thing that I've ever done. I just met a guy randomly uh, through uh, just doing a, some mountain bike stuff the other day through pink bike. And we were just talking and uh, I, I mentioned like, yeah, in the winter, I, I love to ride. Some of me was like, Oh dude, hold the phone. He's like, every year we go to west yellowstone my family and i like it's my favorite thing ever this guy's in like in the rolling hills of san diego and he just <laughs> and then we had a 30 minute conversation just on sledding so it's uh when people get that taste of sledding man it's like it's it's really hard to go back yeah there there's there is nothing like it i'm gonna i was gonna ask this question but uh i see it right up here it's like what was your first sled um that you purchased and um and do you still own it? Don't own it. Um, well, I did not purchase my first sled. My, when I was 13, my dad came home with a ski 670, uh, the 19, a 1997 ski 670 and an old late 1980s Yamaha. And from there, we went to a uh, two summits, a 600 and a 700, the old yellow uh, 700. Yep. I believe that was a 2000 or 2001. Yeah, ZX chassis. Yes. And then uh, let's see. And then that that evolved. And then we and then we got into the Rev Gen 4 chassis um, where we had uh, a 600. Gosh, we've gone through so many. So many. Oh, I, I'm forgetting my father. When I was 15, we still have them. Actually, I'm wrong. Two Grand Touring ski do sleds. And they are tanks, man. They get out twice a year when we have family or my nephews and nieces come into town. And uh, yeah, they're big old clunkers, but they still run like tanks. And those were 2000 or 2001, the year, uh, Grand Touring Sleds. Those, those are what we're taking out, buddy. P pardon? Those are what we're taking out when we get oh, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, they're kind of fun. I mean, with, I mean I've, I've booked it through some powder, not like knee deep or anything, but, you know, gone through a foot and a half or two feet. As long as you kind of get some speed and it's not a crazy, <laughs> uh, you know, hill climb or anything, you can kind of float those puppies. <laughs> I love it. Eh? It sounds like the really old guys from the past. As long as you're going downhill and it's uh, yeah, the snow's not yeah. deeper than an inch, you'll it'll be great. Yeah, yeah. we uh, we still have a 2015 Summit 800 in the garage, um, but we've just been on a more frequent updating role now. Um, you know, started with the 2017, yeah, I mean, the 2017 Summit 850 165. That was a game, a total freaking game changer. I mean, total game changer. Yeah. And, um, I mean, even I, that's funny. Game changer now is is what we're doing with the turbos. It's so it's amazing to see Ski do constantly every year, like just pushing the envelope so much. And then yeah. we uh, had a, had a 2020 Expert Edition, and yeah, now now on the turbos in in the fall. So so we're not going to get into the the, the 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 shoot that you went to because there's more to come in the fall. You got to check it out, guys, and we're not going to spoil any of that. But you got to try uh, some of the new sleds. Uh, what was your first reaction when you got on the new turbo? <laughs> it was it was it was really dope, man. All of us were like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> like it, we. I mean, I'm giggling right now. I mean, really, it's amazing. Like I, I I'm literally. I just had a resurgence of like blood boiling in a good way. Um, Total adrenaline. I was laughing and I was smiling. Yeah. Well, period, you know, period, period end of sentence. Yeah. Laughing and smiling. What's so funny is um, I get sometimes I get uh, I get comments like, "Oh, Nerona's like he's 
he's like over embellishing what the, the new product is, right? Like we did it, I did it with the, with the expert package and then with the turbo one, because we, we were, we're all just like you. We, we, uh, we, we were, when we were riding in West Yellowstone and we got to ride the new sled and, and the experience and the powder we had, I mean, it, it was just like, is this even real? Like Dude, that, those days looked incredible. You guys had all time snow with that new sled. Yeah, I mean, normally what happens is, you know, you get the sled at the end of the season and all the powder's gone and you got to kind of talk to people like, okay, people want, you know, you, if you show it in deep pow, everybody's like, well, I want to see what that does in hard hard conditions. And and really you're like, well, here it is in hard conditions, but I really wish there was three feet of powder because this thing is amazing. Whereas when we when we got up there and started riding and how deep it was and 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 then when you start riding around on the turbo and you're just going everywhere and what you're going through and up and around and and you I mean you really have to rethink how you attack and ride things because yeah. you, you don't even think it's possible but then it is and so you can ride a little bit hesitant because it it wasn't possible before. Oh, dude, and now, I, was, and now I was hesitant for sure the first day of the shoot. I mean, it, it was amazing, dude. The first day of the shoot, I have Ashley and Tony. And, of course, you got some press. You got butterflies. I've only ridden my sled once or twice that year. I was slightly, you know, not in, like, your mid-season great shape, you know. And a brand-new sled, don't want to break it. I was so nervous. But, like, you get all that thing and just, oh, this is freaking... It's nuts, man. It's just <laughs> that's, crazy. That's that's so good. So, uh, so tell good. us, tell us what you uh, what you snow what you spring check. Uh, one sixty five turbo summit expert edition. Uh, awesome. And why did you do that over the free ride? Um, you know, I've I've always been a summit guy. I live in Summit County, um, and I've just I'm a I'm a steep and deep tree guy. Um, I'm I'm not much of a jumper. Um, so I'll leave that to my my better half of Matt and uh, and the rest of the crew there. Yeah. Um, Matt, who is uh, another real rider who I bunked with, uh, gnarly freaking jumper, dude. Yeah, the Skoka um, Freerider. You got to check him out for sure on Instagram. Great oh, guy. Yeah. Doing great. lots of new stuff and riding with lots of great guys. That, and comes over from um, out east into uh, Revy and spends month, month and a half out there and kills yep. it, which is awesome. And yeah. Uh, yeah, there's so many cool things going on. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. You must be psyched. You must be super pumped. Dude, I, I, yeah, we're we're already planning trips. You know, we always do a trip uh, in December. My buddies, we call ourselves the Ducats. Like we just we have our. This is our eighth year doing it. Like before Christmas, so we'll be doing that in, at some point in December um, when my father and I and my brothers are going to British Columbia to do some skiing and we're going to piggyback some snowmobiling on the back of that. So our sleds will be up there and it's just, so we're going to be all over. We're, we're going international, you know, and, and we're just, we want to explore, um, more of, you know, our, our seven, eight great States that we can ride, you know, in Colorado, we go to Alpine every year, my buddies and I, um, let's, let's find more spots in Idaho and, and Utah and, and what have you. So, with, it's just we're all pushing ourselves a lot and just really like getting behind the sport from a from a totally different level. It's totally like a way of life. It's funny how it how that kind of you know it it transcends that over the years. When you're 20, yeah, we can't wait to go sit. Now it's like we that's all we think about. Like I'm dreaming about it in July when it's 95 degrees outside. You know. Yeah. Well, you know you know why we call you a real rider is because you're a real rider. That's what we all think about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, it's all, we all have that in common. And it's also amazing how you can just also meet just the most random people, you know, at a grocery store line or whatever. And you'll, you'll, uh, so we, uh, my wife and I, we were going to get uh, ramen here in LA and a guy had a, a ski doo hat on. And I, I just, and he was eating and he had his mouth full. And I, I'm like, dude, I got to go over there and say hi to this guy. <laughs> and uh, I said, excuse me, sir, pardon for interrupting, just wanted to say hello. You know, snowmobiling for life, rock on. You know, I, I'm I'm gonna it's tell great. you something, buddy. You are the essence of the sport. Uh, being able to do that and go to say hi to people is exactly what this sport needs more of. Uh, because we see a little bit of the too cool for school, and we see little groups and whatever, and who's the best on the hill and whatever. 
that's not really what the sport's about. It's never been about. It's it, it, From the old days, it's always been about guys out there surviving, helping one another, the stoke in the bar at the end of the day. And uh, I want to thank you because that really, when you do that stuff, that's actually, you know, when you talk to, like, I, you know, the, the previous president of the Species Snowmobile Club always said, how you interact with everyone around you on a daily basis is how people see snowmobilers. So if yep. you're driving down the highway crazy and you got a sled deck on the back of your truck, <laughs> guess what people think about Yeah, sledders. exactly. But yeah. if you're if you're the nice guy and doing all this stuff and saying hello to everybody, that's what people think sledders are like and that's really what we are like. So it is really really important to to uh to 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 push that and be more like that. And especially, we I always talk about on the show, this is the stoke we have to pass on to people who are having a tough time, maybe yeah. have lost their job, or have shut down their business, are not able to work. All these people that are struggling and having a hard time now, we need to pass the stoke on to them to say, hey man, don't worry, we're gonna get through it, we're gonna take care of everything. It'll be better on the other side, even though we're yeah. down right now, or you're down, or someone's down, let's bring them up and get through this. Because it's just like on the hill, right? You know, if, if one person isn't coming home, no one's coming home. We're getting everybody out of the gully. We're getting everybody out of yep. the tight trees. And <laughs> we'll celebrate when that happens at whatever time it happens. Sounds like right? you've been there. You've been in the gully once or twice before, haven't you? Oh, I, I, love, I love the four o'clock hole. Oh, dude. Uh, so but we had a, I had an epic stock last year. Uh, my buddy, uh, my riding buddy and my cousin, we were out and it's like, we're heading home 334, been a long day. I'm going up the creek bed. And uh, it was, I, it was, gosh, I forget what happened. Oh, I was just, I was side hilling, but then I just hit a big old, uh, you know, wall of ice and it just threw me off balance. And I, and it, but then boom, that's done an hour and a half later, you know, I'm out, but it was just an all time like, yep, you got to get out. And it, the beers only taste that much better later that night and the cookies and milk and what have you. So it's, it's all good. I'm the, I'm the guy who someone else will get stuck and I'm, we get them out and I'm like, all right, everybody, we're not getting stuck anymore. We just follow the, the line out of here. And then I'm like, Hey, where does that go? And then, and then I get stuck. <laughs> And, yeah. and me so it's like the yeah. guy who told you not to do it is the guy doing it and 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 you know you just sit there and laugh and you go we we can't help ourselves we just yeah. can't help ourselves ha so have you uh have you noticed a great shift in uh safety awareness and avalanche awareness over the past couple of years i i don't know about you but i feel like i have seen an amazing movement of like when skiers and snowboarders adopted helmets and now you see like every skier with a helmet now pretty much yep um, i feel like I'm seeing now almost every rider, backcountry rider, has ab bags, beacons. It's like it's all standard, and that's really great to see too. Um, yeah, so I, are I, you noticing that shift? I I agree. I'm huge on because I come from skiing and background, and I come also from uh, longevity in sports because I've been doing them a long time, and yeah. uh, and so I'm I've always been on that side of hey, take the time to think about what you're doing, um, because then you could do it longer, and and. All I see now that we have to get better at, and we call it the human factor, is, uh, again, we have to get out of our ego's way. The, the problem with our sport is that there's a lot of ego in it, right? There's a lot of guys and ego and how far did you go? Who got the best this and that? And that's great. But at this, we don't want that ego to, to let us make silly choices of you know i have a i have a rule that no no line no ski line no sled line is worth dying for ever it isn't a better way to go and and so i always think about where do i want to be if something does go wrong and that helps me yeah. in, keep keep into a place of where i want to be and if it, if there's no place i want to be i shouldn't even be here yeah. And, and that, and that for me, and, and also I have a really good friend who I got into riding two years ago, a uh, really big back injury, knowledgeable guy. And he's the guy who at the, in the morning says, Hey dude, beacon check. And uh, because you know, it, it's yep. easy. We all, we all say we should do it. And, and uh, you know, Jeremy Hankey's really good on this and, and he calls people out. We're all really good at saying we do it, but not a lot of us do it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so, 
I am really grateful. And that sometimes, you know, when it's dumping, you're like, hey, dude, you want to be like, hey, dude, let's just get out there. I trust you. You trust me. But actually, his his rule is very important. And you have to stop yourself and go, it is important that we check each other. And, yep. it, and we shouldn't just rely on like, you know what you're doing and I know what we're doing. So I trust you and you've done it before because anybody, anybody, anywhere can make a mistake. And so it's really important. That's why, you know, pilots have, you have a backup and you, you yep. go through a checklist. You have a book, like when a pilot gets into a plane to draw, to fly you across the country, they have a book. They don't just go, oh yeah, hit the button. I've done this a million times before. They follow the book because if you don't, yep follow the book of the rules you will you will make a mistake and we need to that's what we need with riders is to to hammer that home and the more people that hammer at home the more people are going to get it because we're still losing too many people and and we're losing too many people for 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 the wrong reasons right you know every year there's going to be there is going to be deaths from from accidents and and people that are generally they're trying to do the best thing but there are still a lot of mistakes being made and uh, i saw one recently in your neck of the woods right two guys like following each other up a big hill and you're like yep. seriously this, the, the number one rule is one person on a hill and and it and it's just like two guys following up the whole hill folds and you know you just want to really reiterate that too is how good are you going to feel if i'm riding up the, the hill and I bury you behind me, and now I have to dig you out, and I, I find you dead. It's just a, you know, we're friends. So it, it's like th that just changes everybody's life. It just changes everybody's life, the family's life uh, from both parties. It goes so far down the chain that we really need to hammer that home so we, we, we have less of that for sure. So I'm, I'm really big on safety. Yeah, amen to that, man. Well said. And, Very well and, said. And so um, – how do you find your zones? Like, are you, do you, uh, have you just sort of, because you've been doing a long time or where are your favorite, favorite areas that you like riding? Uh, great question. Um, I'm a, I'm a map. I love maps and I get that from my dad. Um, just navigation, like GPS, just the weather channel, all those things. But anyways, like Google maps has been a real gift. And over the past couple of years, we've been using that a lot where, say we'll go to a zone that we've been going to for 10 years, but there, we know, we all know that there's more stuff to discover. So you go on Google maps and, and we found this area. To, I mean, we found air, new areas all the time, but you'd be like, Oh man, look at all those small little logging lines and those hallways. And just, we can do this and that. I mean, Google maps has been a huge advocate. Um, and now also just a lot of word of mouth, you know, through the community. And, and as you meet more writers, um, you know, you, you, you start to get kind of the idea of, oh, well, like the flat tops in Colorado are really all time or certain areas of rabbit ears in Colorado are really fantastic. Uh, Buff Pass is going to have a bit more snow generally every year. Um, there's there's also some other sites that I use. Um, gosh, uh, they're bookmark. I can't recall the names right now, but actually it was uh, Jeremy, um, you know, uh, Jeremy Mercier, uh, who posted a, a link about a site of just snow uh, accumulation statistics and the dew points and like all of this, the stats that you can imagine about weather, that's bookmarked. And I'm checking that as well to see, okay, where's the dope soap been following, um, fall, falling, excuse me. So that's uh, just using a bunch of data and word of mouth and Google Maps. I love Google Maps. And then I'll do like screen captures and send it to my buddies. And like, I'm talking to like, hey guys, like, and then, oh, we go up here and follow my mouse. And then and it's amazing. <laughs> like literally you can see a set of trees. And sometimes if something's really gnarly, like, oh, two cliffs on this side, you have to go right through the center of these two or three trees. We've done that to get into the zone we call Nirvana. And we literally went right through the two trees. And, I, and I, I've been very fortunate. I've kind of developed a, a really great visual memory with maps and just going in and out. I can, I can, I feel very confident finding my way in and out of, of just about any area of wilderness. So that's, that's all kind of help, but Google maps, man, I, I feel like that's probably my favorite. Yeah. Well, I, I will tell you number one, Jeremy Mercier, he, that guy is one of my favorite people. He's you're, amazing. You're, you're very, you have very similar uh, characteristics of him. It's that's why it's such a pleasure talking to you. I, He's so fun and we have so much fun together 
uh, he, I don't know if he's ever going to post the photo, but we did. I don't know if you saw Colt. I did the cul-de-sac hairstyle for Colton Olstad, the race where you just do the top. You, oh, yeah? You just cut the sh- chop. It's, it's growing back now. It's a little – I didn't have any levels, so my, my wife had to kind of hit do it do it freestyle. But, but I told Jeremy he had to do it. He sent me a picture the other day of him doing the cul-de-sac. I don't know if he's going to share it. He might have to share it on the, on, on the Skidoo page. We have, to, we have to get it up there. Um, yeah. But, but uh, he, he's such a great guy, but, he, but he's he really big on helping people and shows where he gets his riding areas from, just like you, Google Maps. And it's funny, too, because I think it's that my love of editing is like what you, again, your level is so far beyond mine of, of that, that editing and what you love doing with music. Actually, I have like, uh, my wife always tells me this because I can hear something once and I'll remember it forever. And, uh, and it's good when I need to, you know, r- repeat uh, lines from Family Guy and stuff. Because uh, I got, you know, I got a million of them back here. But, but the, the cool thing is also that translates to maps. So usually when I go into an area for the first time, I, I then I remember that area and I know it. Yeah. And I want to get there and Love and, it. and it's 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 one of those things of practicing that kind of uh, um, you know those things that are very like over and over repeat and uh, ADD yep. kind of thing that actually really help you in a lot of a lot of other sources, right? You know, it, and also I think a, a very natural one for all writers out there is you go to these areas that you love, but you just push yourself, and if you just go through a certain pocket of trees, voila a new zone opens up. And, and so just over the past couple of years, naturally that's been happening a lot just as we've been growing as writers and going through this really gnarly stuff that maybe five, 10 years ago was not in our wheelhouse, but now it is. And man, I tell you, I, I'm not nervous to really go anywhere. And so we can just, you can really find a lot of great terrain if, if you uh, build confident in your writing and, and you can just push through certain areas and, boom i mean you're you're discovering new zones left and right so that's also been a very natural organic way of just pushing yourself and and pushing your friends to to explore and to have an adventure you know yeah now what um so you we, we're not going to talk too much we're not going to talk about photo shoot we've only got a few minutes left um because they cut us off after an hour dude hey is it amazing how fast it goes by oh dude i want to play you some audio real quick but before we go that like we'll go we'll, 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 off? We'll, We'll, we'll go we'll go out with your audio okay we'll go out with your audio okay okay um, but I want to ask you uh, what's next for you or, or what I first want to ask you is what what um, because you did the contest you got it what could you say or what, how could you help young athletes coming up who want to get involved with Skidoo what 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 are your words of wisdom oh that's a great question Dave um, you know to to any athlete who wants to work uh, for ski or any other really manufactured, like you mentioned, man, you know, find, uh, find how you could just provide value in a unique and different way. Um, I'm not the best snowmobiler. Um, you know, I rode with Tony out there on the, on the shoot and yeah, I mean, he's really freaking good. Um, you know, I may not be able to keep up with him all the time. Um, but I, I believe that organizations that have a great vision like ski of wanting to push a sport forward, uh, across generations it, the snowmobiling is going to be happening after you and I pass away Dave in 30 40 50 you know whatever how long it is so like yeah. they have this vision and and we need to bring ideas and a cause of the, to the to the plate to help keep pushing that vision forward um, and just so find a way to 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 be different and to add value in your own way not just how everybody else does it do some yeah. things that are maybe familiar, but have a couple of different niches that you can really get behind in your heart and, and your stoke factor. And that will just then be very organic. Um, and ski do that will be very apparent to them or Tesla, anybody else, whoever it is, you know, it's just any company will get behind you if you're stoked and passionate and you're forward thinking and it's slightly different than everything else. Yeah. Well, Hey, I'm not as good as Tony either, but everybody needs coffee. That's why I'm on the team. I get the big guy as coffee. <laughs> So Dude, Dave, you're like a you're an amazing voice and face for the for the company, man. Like I love when you're delivering sleds last year. That was incredible. Yeah, that that was a highlight. Hey, we're in our last minute. So number okay. one, I want to say thank you so much. We're gonna. I can't wait to do this with you again in the fall. Number two, when you come up to Whistler area, you got to give me a shout. Whether you're coming up for ski season or sled yeah. or before for mountain biking, we'll get out. 
And uh, now I want everybody to, uh, I put your video up on my page, so check it out. Make sure you like his page and uh, take us out with some music. And I want to thank you so much for your time and what you're my doing for, for the sport. I can't wait to hear some more of your music. Take us out to the end of the show. Thank, thank you, Dave, uh, for having me on. So I'm not going to be playing a lot of music here, guys, but.